You set out, you plant all this stuff, you spend all the time calculating and measuring and digging and planting and watering only to find your fruit and vegetables are being overrun by some sort of pests. I'm Cameron, welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you five serious pest situations we're dealing with in our orchard and in our garden. Let's get busy. are just a reality when it comes to growing things. They want to eat what you've got. It's not just tasty to you, it's tasty to them as well. But what happens when you just get overrun and are being attacked on multiple fronts by totally different types of pests? I'm gonna show you what we've got going on here in the orchard and what we've been doing about it. And if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how your own orchard or garden can turn on itself, so stay tuned for that. And now would be a great time to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and hit the join button below all of four of those things because you might want to become a Busy Gardener member. All right, let's get on with it. Behind me here is our gorgeous triple crown blackberry crop, but there's a sound. Can you hear it? Do you know what that is? Those are these green June beetles, which I used to think were Japanese beetles. It turns out they're not. They're just June beetles, but they're green and huge. They're like buses flying through the air, bouncing into things. They don't have much for brains, but they do have jaws, and they just eat and eat and eat all of the fruit that I've got going on here. Look at these guys. So these things, aside from just eating the blackberries, also put their teeth into our pluots and our nectarines, and they're so annoying because they just will come and just sit on a piece of fruit. And then that's frightening because you come and try to pick some fruit and all of a sudden you hear and the whole tree starts shaking and these things fly out. So we're going to do something about it. They go and they bury themselves under the ground and they lay these eggs which turn into these huge grubs that are like the size of a pinky finger and those things are right beneath the surface. This season we're going to dispatch and release the chickens and we're going to let them go and scratch around once we start seeing evidence of those grubs so that way they can go and just tear up you know right beneath bottom of the mulch and just get rid of them at the source so that way we don't have such an infestation the next season. Okay let's look at the next pest. The next pest killed this tree behind me here, this Granny Smith apple. It also killed a Gala apple and our, our donut Saturn peach. And that is boring insects. These are insects that bore their way into the inside of a tree and begin inviting disease and decay into that tree, causes the entire system to fail and the tree to die. Now this one's a really annoying one because you can't see it as obviously as you can those beetles. But if you look really closely, you can see that there are little holes that make their way inside the wood. They're not as obvious as the giant beetles, but you can see that there are these tiny little holes as the beetles have made their way into the inside of the tree. These almost look like little pinpricks, and that's where these beetles have gone into the tree. Sometimes you can see evidence of this type of thing if you see any type of sap oozing out of your tree. That can be an indicator that something has made a hole, but that's not always the case. The only real ways to treat this once it's happened are to cut off the affected pieces of wood and discard them entirely. So it's really important to be keeping an eye on this type of thing. Now, one way to prevent this is to continually paint with something like an Ivy Organics 3-in-1 tree guard, which uh, we painted originally but didn't follow up with, and I think that's what contributed to the problem. The other is spraying your trees that you might think think might be affected with an overwintering spray, like it's just a horticultural spray. I'm gonna be linking to all this stuff down below. So if you're dealing with any of these problems, you're gonna have the right product for you. Okay, let's move on. While I'm going on to the next one, why don't you let me know what kind of pests are you dealing with in your orchard or garden? And what have you done to successfully get rid of it? Or are you still in the battle? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, a pest that has really affected my three-in-one nectarine planting, my double delight nectarine, Arctic Star and Arctic Glow nectarines, as well as my spicy nectoplum behind the camera is fungus. You may notice that these leaves are all twisted and gnarled. They also had kind of a white powdery substance on them. 
And this causes an issue over time. It, it really diminishes the tree's ability to photosynthesize and creates a stress point for the tree to have all, so much of its foliage affected. You also notice it has these holes in here, which are similar to like a, a I don't remember what they call it, like a scatter shot or a, or a bird shot um, type of disease. Now, the way that this affects these leaves is oftentimes the the foliage will be affected at the bud level so there will be some sort of fungus which can be exacerbated by wet conditions now i don't spray the actual canopy of my tree so i think we just had an uncharacteristically wet time which contributed to it what i've done in this case is i've gone through and i've sprayed with an organic uh, copper based spray and it's a fungicide and so that way it goes through and it's able to inhibit any further growth that way it doesn't affect new buds that are bridge branching out even on top of that and it's something that i need to come back with next season before bud break like right as the before the buds break is a great time to come through and spray if you would know that you have fungus issues and so that way it kills it at the bud level and doesn't allow it to start to infect all of your stuff it's kind of an interesting thing you can see where the uh affected tissue was i came through and i sprayed and you see that all of the new tissue after that all the foliage that's come out is not affected by fungus the way that this kind of initial set was all right there's a really destructive one that i want to show you next this little hole right here should give you a hint as to what the destructive pest is and that is ground squirrels now, we have been inundated this year with gophers. I made a gopher video on how to exterminate gophers using the gopher hawk. Fantastic, by the way. Link to that below. But also, we've seen a huge uptick in the number of rabbits and ground squirrels that have come through and been burrowing all throughout. But we've also seen a lot more rodent damage in the orchard and in the garden. The other day, I looked up and I saw these two ground squirrels sitting up on top of our kale plant just eating away at the leaves those are the things that destroyed our zucchinis it destroyed our cantaloupe plant it's they've bitten into my pomegranates which aren't even going to be ready for another two months these things are voracious and they're leaving holes all over the place this is making life really challenging because they're undermining some of the structural things you notice that here they've burrowed under the pavers that are leveling out this little shed we have a whole system over here we've got some seating area and part of that is now starting to slope because of that there are holes all over the place going beneath trees so the way we're going to treat these and deal with these if i don't shoot them when i see them is by putting some sort of trap that'll humanely uh, encourage them to come over but then catch them quickly and hopefully give them a you know just a quick death um we're not really into poisoning animals around here largely because we want to make sure that no predator or other, you know, pet ends up finding the carcass and becoming poisoned by it. So it's going to be a quick snap trap that we think we're going to take care of these, finding all the entrances and exits to their burrows and hopefully able to minimize some of that pest pressure. Let me show you another one. Okay, my fifth and final pest here has to do with fire blight. Fire blight is a pathogen that affects pome fruit like apples and pears and quince and it gets introduced by pollinators or splashing water onto the flower buds typically and that pathogen makes its way into the system and starts making its way down the wood affecting eventually the entire tree if it isn't caught in enough time now i made a video on this very tree and how we tried to get it out in front of it by making some pretty severe cuts to this one cultivar that was coming off of our four in one pair but it looks like from the evidence over there that it wasn't enough and because it's so close to the tree itself i'm not convinced that uh, i think we're going to lose this tree i think the entire tree is done now you can tell that it's fire blight typically when you see what looks like fire it looks like it's been burned um, i've got some area here i was burning some weeds and so this burned weed bears a striking resemblance to this affected foliage you can even see the uh the like burned up looking fruit that's on here that was affected so it took some you know fruit and all of it and just affected it the pears that we see on the outside of this tree are not affected and so i'm going to be able to harvest those but i think unfortunately this tree is going to have to come out this year so that way we don't just watch it slowly die even further Typically, if you have fire blight and you notice it at some tips or something, you want to go several inches below that, make a cut, and that way you try to prevent that from making its way further down into the system. But in this case, in our case, 
we had fire blight that was coming out on a branch that was way out here and I already made a cut all the way to the trunk and we're still seeing fire blight. In fact, I'm seeing that this is already blackening the, the trunk over here. So the, the chance of it not already being in the system further down inside is very unlikely. Okay, so we get it. Pests come in from the outside, they fly in, they climb in, whatever, and they kind of start messing with it. But what happens when you have caused the problem yourself, like I have with this passion fruit that is absolutely eating my pomegranates, my dragon fruit, and my guava? If I didn't tell you, you would have no idea that this is a pomegranate underneath this passion fruit. There's so much passion fruit vine covering this poor tree. When I planted my passion fruit over there, I saw how vigorous it was. It had all of this chain link fence to climb on and that was great. But here it's got a much shorter span of chain link fence. And so it's using every other available structure to grow itself. This is my fault. I also haven't been on top of this. What I'm gonna do is take a pair of these hedge trimmers and just cut all the way down and cut off every bit of vine that's climbing onto these trees. The reality is, is that passion fruit, it only lives a few years before it, it dies, the vine dies and needs to be replaced. Whereas these trees are all trees that I want to live for a long, long time. They're long lived trees. And so if I didn't, if I don't do anything about this, you know, you can almost see where it's made it from the fence and then it's on the pomegranate and on the guava and on the picotum. And if I didn't stop it, it probably would go all the way until it met the dragon fruit, its other little tropical buddy. So it's not always just puppies and rainbows in an orchard or a garden. And I've made actually a playlist of pest videos that I'm gonna put right here. So be sure to check that out. There might be some pests that you've been encountering and I might give you some tips that'll help you out. Well, whether you're battling one crazy pest in your orchard or garden or 500, till next time, stay busy.